The player review series for the 2023 MLB season starts now with starting pitching. And we're going to talk about Mitch Keller, Johan Oviedo, and some struggles from the young starting pitching that we saw this season and more on today's episode of the Locked On Pirates podcast. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Everybody to the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every day. My name is Ethan Smith, and thank you so much for turning uh, tuning into this show, as you always do here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And it is the beginning of the 2023 player review series. It's something that I've done in previous years. It's something that I will continue to do as I am the host of this show at the end of every single season. Just at some point, you really hope that I'll be doing it after a playoff run. But the 2023 season has come to a close. If you did not watch um, me and Gary's review of the season yesterday, please go check that out. But of course, you guys have seen the schedule on Twitter already of the player reviews on today's show. We're talking about starting pitching, and that's what we're going to be talking about all day. Later in the episode, I'll let you know about the rest of the week and moving forward. And... We are obviously, if we're talking about starting pitching here, you have to start with the MVP for the Pittsburgh Pirates pitching-wise, and not, not even to bury the lead at all, it's Mitch Keller. We know Mitch Keller was the most consistent pitcher on the staff. He was the best pitcher in the rotation all year. It's the reason he got his first all-star nod. And down the stretch of the season, we've talked about Mitch Keller a lot, probably to the point where you guys are like, hey, is Ethan going to do a show that doesn't involve mentioning Mitch Keller? Apparently not, because Mitch Keller has just been a revelation to talk about from last season being a guy that got optioned to the minors, was in the bullpen for a while, to turning into an all-star caliber pitcher, and ultimately breaking multiple team records this season as a right-handed pitcher, of course, with the most strikeouts in a season by a right-handed pitcher in Pittsburgh Pirates history. And if he would have started on Sunday, he probably would have hit that 200-200 club. He cared more about the strikeouts. He was very open about that. So, again, you want him to be healthy leaving this season. You want him to be healthy entering next season. And his final statistics – don't exactly sound all that like I'm on I'm trying to word it's very good season on paper. The ERA did get inflated a little bit. He did have his struggles in the second half of the season, which was very unfortunate. I wanted him to have a just coast to coast, very good season, but every pitcher gets knocked around every once in a while, as evidence to the Pirates when they faced top pitching this season. And Keller finished the season with 32 starts, 194 and one-thirds innings pitched, a 4.21 ERA, 210 strikeouts, 55 walks, a 249 opposing batting average, and a 1.25 whip. And I've mentioned this before on the show plenty of times as well, that Keller did set multiple career highs for himself this season. You look at starts, well over any number he's met before. Innings pitched, well over any amount of innings pitched that he's ever pitched. And these are all among a full season because you could go on baseball reference and look at 2020 and see that, oh, yeah, this statistic's better. But, yeah, he made like six starts that year, and it obviously was not a full season. He also had his first complete game of his career this year. He never had one prior to this season and opposing batting average was another one that he brought down considerably, which you also have to be proud about. He also had his career high in strikeouts, obviously breaking the pirates franchise record by righties. And he had the best whip of his career as well. So again, I mean, everything that I've said about Mitch Keller and everything that's been said about Mitch Keller can no longer really, you can't come up with really anything new. Now, the biggest questions surrounding Keller are not really what he's doing on the field anymore. I mean, obviously, you still want him to have the same level 
a prowess that he had pitching this season and his jump and development was much, much needed for this team. But now it doesn't really like the biggest questions don't really go to his play anymore or what pitches are going to work and won't work. It's financials. And I talked about it last week a little bit, and I said that I would get into a little bit more length with it in the player review series about an extension for Mitch Keller this offseason because I think it's a must for this team to get it done. And obviously he was the ace of the staff, and you want to lock in the ace of your staff if you can, which I think the Pirates can do. I think that Keller is within their price range, and I'm going to get into that in a minute about an example of what I think would be a very, very worthwhile extension for both parties. And, of course, Keller is also under contract through the 2025 season, meaning he's under contract through this up this upcoming 2024 campaign and the full season following via arbitration. And this season he was under contract. He signed a $2.4 million deal to avoid arbitration. And I think the sentiment that can be shared among anybody that's thinking about a Mitch Keller extension is that the longer that the Pirates wait to get this done, the longer it's going to take to get it done and the more expensive that he's going to get because I think Keller's only going to get better or at least maintain his pace. And even if he maintains his pace, he'll get paid, folks. I mean, Mitch Keller has stuff and he was doing very good with it this season and any team would be happy to have Mitch Keller services on their on their team right now. He is a perennial top 25 pitcher in baseball right now. And that's being generous. I mean, give me 24 starters that you would rather have other than Mitch Keller. It's very hard. And that again, that 2.4 million figure that I mentioned, it helped avoid arbitration, but he's going to be looking arbitration in the face. Once again, this offseason, and if they don't get an extension done before 2025, in 2025. But realistically, what does a Mitch Keller extension look like after his best campaign of his career? And you look across baseball for examples, and it's tough to find examples because teams have different spending habits in the Pittsburgh Pirates and higher payrolls and different ways of paying their starting pitchers. But I looked at Miami who is in the playoffs, thanks in part to the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the San Francisco Giants, who both did things in a, in pretty much the last calendar year or so, that, or even farther than that. I don't remember when these extensions were signed exactly, but I think that they are a good benchmark to something that the Pirates could do, but it would be in the middle of these uh, deals. Sandy Alcantara, who, of course, did not have the season that he was hoping for in Miami, but Miami, of course, still in the postseason, signed to a five-year, $56 million contract by Miami, I believe, before 2022 season kicked off, and he really kick-started his ace um, mentality in Miami. Then you look at Logan Webb, who's in San Francisco, and he signed a five-year, $90 million deal with San Francisco. So obviously the commonality in this is a five-year deal between those two, but obviously the mother, the, the money figures are very different. And you look at $56 million and $90 million. So when I was thinking about that and looking at those contracts, I thought five years was a great number. And then when you divide 56 plus 90 divided by two, that sticks you in the realm of about $73 million over five seasons, so about 14.6 annual value. And as for what I would think would make sense, just bring that number up to an even $75 million. That would bring the annual value up to $15 million annually unless you want to do what they've done with Key Brian Hayes a little bit where his contract will get more expensive as time goes. But an extension of five years would lock Keller up through the 2029 season. Something to think about. And it's something that I think the Pirates desperately need to think about with the questions that are surrounding the rotation. And he still has plenty of time 
left in his career to not only improve, but be the ace of the staff, even with Paul Skeens being in the fold. And 2023, nevertheless, was a massive success for Mitch Keller. And realistically, thanks to the guy we're going to talk about in segment two, Johan Oviedo was one of the biggest reasons why this rotation wasn't an absolute dumpster fire. And we'll get into his emergence as a starter in this rotation. But before we do that, Let's talk about one of my favorite sponsors on this show, Bird Dogs. Visit birddogs.com slash locked on MLB or use promo code locked on MLB to get a free tech hat with any purchase. Bird Dogs, by the way, they make you look great. I wear them all the time. I wear them to work. I wear them when I go out because, you know, Savannah, we have that wonderful weather. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of a stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you can get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. And as I mentioned before, they're functional on any occasion. Be it a golf outing with the buddies, be it a date, be it an evening out, the pool, a workout, lounging, work. There you go. And you get the water bottle for free. You can get anything for free from Bird Dogs. But all you have to do is go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. Or enter the promo code locked on MLB at checkout for a free Bird Dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB for a free bo- uh, water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Johan Oviedo's emergence for the Pittsburgh Pirates was very welcoming. To this team for a lot of reasons. And by the way, always thank you so much for tuning into this show, as you always do here on the Locked On Pirates podcast. Again, my name is Ethan Smith. You can follow me on Twitter right there. And it's it's clear, and I spoke about it in the first segment, that Mitch Keller was the best starting pitcher for this Pittsburgh Pirates team. But thankfully, with everything that happened in the rotation, which we'll talk about in the third segment, he wasn't alone. Johan Oviedo, of course, who was acquired in 2022 from the St. Louis Cardinals via the Jose Quintana trade, entered the campaign. Realistically, I think a lot of us thought he was going to be a fringe starter, but more likely a long relief bullpen option. But of course, with injuries to JT Brubaker and Vince Velasquez, and then eventually Rich Hill's trade to San Diego, Oviedo was forced into his first full professional campaign as a starting pitcher And he took the opportunity, folks, and he ran with it. His season ended with the same amount of starts uh, as Mitch Keller with 32. He had 177 and two-thirds innings pitched, a 4-3-1 ERA, 158 strikeouts, 83 walks, a 237 opposing average, and a 1.37 whip. Now, there's nothing elite about anything that I really said. I mean, the walk to strikeout ratio is not that great. The whip is pretty good, but it's nothing to write home about. The ERA is mid fours, what you expect from Oviedo. And again, nothing elite, but for the Pirates, it's just what the doctor ordered from Johan Oviedo. And I would even go out and say it right now, Oviedo turning into a starter and playing the way he did this season already makes the Jose Quintana trade a victory. Because okay, uh, the Cardinals got two months of Jose Quintana before they were bounced out of the playoffs pretty quickly by the Philadelphia Phillies. And then we remember Chris Stratton was a part of that as well, and he was eventually traded uh, earlier this year. Meanwhile, the Pirates have a perennial starter. In, I mean, they have a starter in their rotation now in Oviedo. It just depends on where he's going to be in the rotation next season. And then you also are waiting on Malcolm Nunez and what he can do through the minor league system to hopefully eventually get here. And if he turns out to be something, that trade is going to look phenomenal for the Pittsburgh Pirates and not so good for the St. Louis Cardinals. And it's no, and don't get mistaken either. Oviedo still has many problems, particularly with his fastball. And of course he added the sinker because the Pirates love to do that with all of their pitchers at this point. 
But Oviedo's 25, and as mentioned before, this was his first full year being a starter at the MLB level. And that's what you really were hoping for from him is that he would turn into something like this. And again, he has, he has become a starter in this rotation for years and years to come, especially if he could just be as consistent as he was this season for the most part. Obviously the season started a little bit slow for Oviedo. It was getting to the point where we thought he would need openers because he was giving up so many runs early on in games but he would always settle in. He would give up those early runs. He would always settle in. He would never panic. He would always just use his stuff. He had like the highest breaking ball rate of any pitcher through the first month and a half of the season and enjoyed throwing curveballs a lot. And amidst all this, he has plenty, and I mean plenty, of time to improve on things. And entering 2024, you look at the two pitchers that you know you can rely on in this rotation before additions are made. You have Mitch Keller. You have Johan Oviedo. Those are two guys now that going into 2024 spring training, you know those guys are going to be in your rotation and be reliable options that could possibly get you five, at least six innings every outing. Keller, you can even say six, even seven innings every single outing. And the other spots are up in the air for a variety of reasons that we're going to talk about again in the final segment. And if it was not for Johan Oviedo stepping up into his new role and embracing it, this situation with the rotation would have been even worse going into the offseason because instead of talking about having to get two starting pitchers somehow via trade or free agency, you'd be talking about having to find three, arguably, or going into the season with two of Mitch or um, you'd have Mitch Keller, you would have Oviedo. I was still thinking the rotation, but you wouldn't feel as good about it. And then you would be talking about Luis Ortiz, Rolando Contreras, Quinn Priester, Jared Jones, and the liking, all being guys, and even Kyle Nicholas being guys that you would have to rely on in the rotation. And with 2024 being a season where the Pirates want to compete, that just can't happen. It just can't. And Oviedo embraced the role, and even in his final start, he said, "I have to be meaner." I have to be more mean when I'm on the mound. I have to have a different feeling about things when I'm out there pitching. And I think it's something that he's going to take into the offseason and really run with it. I think that Oviedo is a guy that, if he is developed correctly, could get to Mitch Keller's status. And that's not something we would have said before this season started and before JT Brubaker and Vince Velasquez went off the shelf or on the shelf, it's just not something that would have happened and something that we would have thought about. And that was really what 2023 was all about was a lot of things that we never really thought would happen that indeed ended up happening. And for Oviedo, he's of course in the pre-arb stage reaching arbitration after next season. So contract wise, wouldn't worry about it too much. He's under team control for quite a while, and we know how Ben Charrington loves his controllable assets. And now what Oviedo's role will be in 2024 in the rotation, it's unknown. You don't know what pitchers are going to go out and add, and you don't know where they're going to want to throw these guys in the rotation. Is Oviedo still the second starter? It's very possible. Could he be the fourth or fifth starter in this rotation with the correct additions? Sure. Either way, though, Oviedo coming into his own and being a phenomenal addition to this rotation via a trade that really didn't affect the Pirates all that much, you have to be happy about it. And I don't really like to grade things anymore, but you look back on that Quintana trade and then what Oviedo has turned into, and it's hard to not say it's an A, A plus, because you found a starting pitcher virtually by trading nothing. Quintana was on an expiring deal. The Pirates were not a playoff team last season. They weren't even positive for most of last season and you ended up getting a guy that can give you five or six innings every single outing it could be a reliable fourth or fifth starter for you at worst that's a major win for this team and thanks to Johan Oviedo you know in 2024 you're going to have a dynamic duo of Keller and Oviedo who will join them and who else can impact the 2024 rotation from the rest but you know not the best from the young arms that we got to see this season. But before we talk about that, 
Let's talk about FanDuel because guess what, folks? The MLB playoffs kick off today. By the time you're watching this, it'll probably be up around 12.30 Eastern time. You will be about two and a half hours away from postseason baseball and something the Pirates are desperately looking to get back to. And the NFL is also in full swing right now, and you can snap into this uh, into action this NFL season and this MLB postseason with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets whether you win or lose. So there's really no risk, high reward. You either win money or you win money. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more, and, of course, the same game parlay. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season and the MLB postseason because FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL and an official sponsor of the Locked On Podcast Network. And before we uh, kick off this third segment, I want to send uh, some love, prayers, and condolences to one of my good friends, Andrew DiMaggio, who lost his father last night at the age of 85. Uh, he shared it publicly, and I would love if you guys could uh, outreach to him on Facebook. His name is Andrew DiMaggio. Wonderful guy, huge Dior fan, huge Pittsburgh fan. He's from Burgettstown. So send him all of your love if you could. Thank you for coming to the final segment of today's episode of Locked on Pirates, again brought to you by Bird Dogs and FanDuel. And we're going to talk about the rest and not the best of the rotation that we saw this year. Because outside of Keller and Oviedo, it, it's okay, folks, to admit that the rest of the rotation was an absolute mess. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, you saw the injuries to JT Brubaker. You saw the injury to Vince Velasquez. And I'll even throw Mike Burrows in there, who we've had on the show, friend of the podcast, who I expected big things from this year. And he sadly was not able to showcase any of his stuff this season with his injury. You add in the trade to Rich of Rich Hill to San Diego, as I also mentioned earlier. And you get a place where you, you get to a spot where you were hoping that Luis Ortiz and Rowanzi Contreras were going to step in, take their momentum from 2022 to 2023, and really become mainstays in this rotation. And if you're watching this and listening to what I'm saying, no, this is not me talking about this at the beginning of 2023. This is after. And as mentioned, Ortiz and Contreras, they just failed to bring any of their momentum that they had from 2022 to this season and ultimately it led to both of them being optioned at multiple points of the season and realistically becoming minor league players for most of the season. It created a skeleton of an MLB rotation as a result. And Contreras, I think, of the two hurt a little bit more than Ortiz. We remember Ortiz kind of being the minor league flyer of the system last year. And seeing him have to go all the way back to rookie ball to reclaim some confidence and velocity really hurt this team. And I think it really hurt just Pirates fans in general because we've loved Rowanzi Day. We loved him when he was traded to the Pittsburgh Pirates from the New York Yankees in the Jamison Talion trade, which is starting to look like a mess. And you want Contreras to be good, and he has been good at points in his career, but 2023 was just not it for him. He lost his confidence. He lost his velocity. He lost a lot of different things that were making Rowanzi Contreras who he was at the MLB level. Ortiz, by the way, who I will say, again, I think profiles more as a long relief arm long term, had his usual control issues, but it's okay to have control issues if you have the 99 to 100 mile per hour fastball as long as it's somewhere around the zone. But then when you have the dip in velocity, it just makes those issues unbearable. And that's something we saw from... Luis Ortiz again this season and he just couldn't pitch at the big league level because of it and you add in Quinn Priester who a guy a former first round pick we were expecting him to come up at some point he did and he had his very similar struggles as well he couldn't hit the zone he was giving up a ton of runs although he started his career on a win after giving up like seven or runs because the Pirates offense picked him up 
But you could go on and on about every young pitcher that we saw in this rotation this year. And even the second year guys, and they just struggled a ton this year. And to the point where the last two months of the season, you didn't even know who the Pirates were really pitching on any given day outside of Mitch Keller and Johan Oviedo. And you didn't know if it was going to be a starter or an opener. Speaking of, you had Bailey Falter and Thomas Hatch. You saw them at time at times be in the opener role or the starter role. They both did fine. I think they could be valuable op- or, uh, bullpen options. But I don't think either of them is going to return in a starting role next season. And they're not exactly guys that you would want to return in starting roles next season. And the expectation, and we all know this, is that two starters will be added to the rotation at some point via free agency or trade or however the Pirates want to do it, which is pitting that group of Luis Ortiz and Quinn Priester and Rowanti Contreras, and if you want to throw his name in there, Jared Jones and Kyle Nicholas, against each other really likely for only one rotation spot. To which I've joked and said the Pirates might end up having the best AAA pitching staff of all time next season. But it's also creating depth in the rotation. Once you come out and add these outside acquisitions, you're going to have those guys fighting for those spots and improving while they're fighting for those spots because they are still very young players. Again, folks, let me remind you, it took Mitch Keller until his age 27 season to really come into his own. None of these guys are even close to that age yet. So making them fight over a rotation spot rather than just handing it to them, I think is going to work out better for this team. And at the end of the season, you cannot like the rotation overall. You just can't. There's nothing really to go about it and say as a whole, one through five, the rotation was very good because it just wasn't. It was really Mitch Keller, Johan Oviedo, it was Batman and Robin, as I like to call them, and everybody else. And you go into 2024 – knowing that you have Mitch Keller and Johan Oviedo as your mainstay options. You then look at two acquisitions that you're going to have more than likely, maybe even more than that. Again, we don't know what the Pirates are going to do in this offseason. It's going to be a crazy offseason because there is a lot of unknown factors that we do not know about Ben Charrington's plan and what he wants to do and how he wants to attack this offseason and patch some of these holes that the Pirates have in the roster to make them a perennial wild card or division winner. But we know pitching is going to be a part of it. We just don't know how much of it the Pirates are going to get. And this season was all about getting answers from pitching. And we did get a lot of answers from pitching. We did. Some of them are just not the ones that we hope to get as far as Rolanda Contreras, Luis Ortiz, Quinn Priester, or some of these other young guys. But at the end of the day, Starting pitching in 2023 was a talking point for a while and most of the season. And I don't think that's going to change here in the offseason either. And we're going to be looking at some of these acquisitions after the player review series is done. Once I start getting into my offseason primers uh, about what the Pirates can do. But obviously, we still have a lot of player reviews to do, folks. And we're going to be talking about the bullpen on tomorrow's show. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the Locked On Pirates podcast, as you always do here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Again, my name is Ethan Smith. You can follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan or at Locked On Pirates. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday afternoon or evening whenever you're listening to this show. And I will see you on the flip side.